Costa Mesa. Are you ready for the main event of the evening? Then make some noise because here we go! From the blue corner, training out of Austin, Texas, representing B Team, please make some noise for Nick Rodriguez! There comes our man storming the mat, Nicky Rod. Last minute replacement, but no camp necessary. He's been fired up the last 48 hours, and man, he's oozing confidence. Mm -hmm. And he always is. He said time and time again, I am ready year round. It doesn't matter who's in front of me, I can do it. And I love that attitude, and we're gonna see that on full display tonight. Natty Nikki Ride coming in hot. I like it, I like it. Looking for the Roddy luck. He's ready to go. Let's go. You know, there. His opponent in the red corner, training out of San Diego, California, by way of Belo Horizonte, Brazil, representing Gracie Baja, it's Philippe Pena! Here we go, Pena. the notorious Pena. Man, I'm super, super excited. This is the best we've seen. And that's kind of the tale of this entire match, right? This, we've seen, we've never seen Philippe Pena in this amazing shape with this long of a training camp here in San Diego in California. So stoked to see what a kind of a show he can put on for us. Yeah, Felipe truly put in one of the most grueling camps of his entire career ahead of this weekend. The main opponent may have changed with Gordon Ryan being out, but he knows how difficult of a task Mickey Rod is. Here's the tale of the tape for this, our heavyweight main event of the evening. A little bit of a age discrepancy between the two, similar height, similar weight, but I would say Felipe Pena coming in here with a very specific training camp. Nikki Rod, the last minute replacement. It's our main event of the evening, Chase. All right, guys, here we go. And we are underway, and Nikki Rod looking to wrestle up a little bit of a feint there, perhaps. Felipe answers back by pulling guard. This is a 30-minute match, so pay attention to the pacing early. Absolutely. Nikki Rod immediately going for what Kendall accurately called the Roddy Lock, mm -hmm. Body Lock passing system that uh, Nikki has used so much. In fact, he used it to success against Felipe Pena at ADCC this last year, where Nikki uh, earned himself a second place medal. Yeah, it's interesting to mention that they had a match at ADCC last September. Nikki won due to a guard pass, but I think a lot can be done in a very solid five months. And like we've all said, it's kind of a different, we're hoping to see a different Pena than we saw in September. And if that's the intention behind a five, a three to five month camp, then it's absolutely doable with the right intention and with the right coaching. Pena mentioned in his pre-match interviews that he thought the rule set here at WNO was going to be a detriment to Nicky Rod, that he would, wouldn't be able to wrestle, rely on uh, the shorter time periods, for example, and that he would have to match a pace that's more in favor and that mm. Pena would like to play. So we'll see if that actually pays out for him. Yeah, that is a really interesting thing to mention. I asked Nikki about that the other day, I think it was yesterday, about the 30 minute time limit because it's not something we've seen, that we've really seen from Nikki before and it was supposed to be an open time or a no time limit, now it's 30. So Philippe, that, that is to say that Philippe has been training to go for much longer than 30 minutes, right? So he is very comfortable with this. Now, Nikki's response to that was, man, I'm, I'm training longer than 30 minutes every time on the mats, so I should be good to go. Why not get paid? As yeah, said, why, yeah, he's exactly. like, I was going to train on Saturday anyway. Why not get paid for it? And I like here Pena's uh, motioning for Nikki to come in, to come closer, to enter the guard. Interesting to st uh, statistic between the two of these competitors. Nikki Rod, over half of his submission victories have come from a choke from the back. Felipe Pena has fought in his black belt record across 176 matches at wow. black belt. He has a nearly 50% submission rate. Mm. So incredible. Incredible, dynamic, dangerous competitor, Felipe Pena. And you know what? He's known for uh, just being such a technical, hard guard to pass. And you see the adjustment he's already making in response to Nicky Rod. He's keeping his knees high. That's something you got to do against the body lock passes. Mm -hmm. You got to keep your knees in between you and your partner. You can't afford to get your knees smashed one way or the other. Right. You have to be very careful. And he's making that adjustment early on.
I like the, the bit of the pinning of the feet onto the shin here from Nikki. If he's going to be circling around, trying to, we talk a lot about the difference between, you know, pressure passing and spatial passing. And you have to be able to use that spatial passing or that distance passing to find the angle and then close the space. But if your opponent is doing a good job following you the entire time, well, then you start running in circles, right? So we see Nikki try instead kind of backing up and closing the space instead and trying to go into his uh, body lock system. If you guys are following along on the score or the time limit here, you'll see that we have a 30 minute main event. Just a quick reminder, a little bit longer. You know what's interesting about Penna's open guard is that I find many Nogi guard player these days really insist on playing a seated guard. They stay seated up the entire time like Felipe was just a moment ago. But Felipe actually goes to a supine laying down guard um, uh, rather like voluntarily consistently with is not something that I think we see very often, especially in the heavier weight categories, especially against someone like Nikki Rod, who's really, really great at that body lock passing. So it just shows a lot about Fleep's confidence there with his open guard. And he sort of dips back and forth between laying flat on his back and just being up on one elbow. Right. Yeah, he never really sits up all the way and starts attacking the legs and trying to go into that kind, of, those kinds of positions. He invites Nikki not only by playing, by laying on his guard, but laying on his back, but also with his hands and with his words, motioning Nikki, inviting him to come into the open guard. Felipe is so good at this for a big guy inverting, going underneath the hips. Doesn't always need, need to be chasing a submission. Gets a lot of sweeps like that. Look for the bear trap, also known as the break trap, something he used to great effect, actually, in his last match with Gordon Ryan as well. Uh, very slick work there, and already, I think, feeling um, very comfortable so far with Nicky Rob playing into what he would call his game. Mm -hmm. But it was in a position like this, Chase, this sort of allowing Nicky Rod to get a little tighter mm -hmm. than perhaps a lot of competitors would feel comfortable. Yeah. That led to the body lock passing, and it was a lot of the taunting uh, mm -hmm. be beforehand from Felipe Pena that sort of ushered in the pass attempt of Nicky Rod. And right here, you're seeing him. He's getting closer and closer as the match is going on to connecting his hands. And last time, that spelled the beginning of the end. Yeah, you've got to imagine that, right as you say that, we saw a quick look there for a moment, Jake. And, right, and it, you've got to imagine that, especially once Nicky was announced as the replacement and it was agreed to, that Felipe wa went back and watched that, and especially with his coaches, watched that and said, okay, well, this is your style. We know this is where you want to be, but what was the make or break in that guard pass, and how can we do it differently this next time? One thing that's also great about uh, Nick Rodriguez aside from being willing to be a last minute replacement in a show as grand with a scale as this, is that he's a constant student of the game. We see highlights on you know his Instagram and social media of him really trying to learn the leg lock game, really trying to open his guard and get good at all these different facets of jiu-jitsu. He doesn't just want to be a one-dimensional uh, competitor. He wants to be well-rounded. Right. Yeah, that position was a little interesting seeing Nick's right arm look a little bit exposed over the top. Potentially, we can see some of those uh, penna triangles. We can see some attacks on that top arm to open up the lower body, but tons of options there if you leave those arms exposed laying over the top like that. Felipe briefly talking to the referee. Oh, he's talking about greasing. He's trying to tell the crowd that there's some greasing going on, I believe. And whether it's true or not, I think maybe just giving a bit of a show for the audience. But it looks like the judge is coming, going to come over here and look for a towel. May have some addressing of that. Here at Who's Number One, unearthing jiu-jitsu community conspiracy theories. <laughs> and delivering great jiu-jitsu at the same time. Our referee, Gabor Martins, on the side here. Yeah, still 23 minutes left on the clock, so very much in the opening rounds here. Stop. As the sweat starts to get going a little bit, that's when we're going to come in and check. And uh, I would imagine we're going to check on both athletes. <laughs> Got to keep the game fair here. Yeah, Gabriel Martins clearing any possibility. That, very uh, smart move by our referee there. Yes. I like that. All right, and the crowd has begun to come alive here. Although they've been extremely engaged all night, there's been just a, a lot of anticipation ahead of this matchup here tonight. We're only 
eight minutes in, not quite. And uh, they are on their feet, let's say. I can actually hear people typing on Reddit from here. <laughs> What's interesting to me to wonder is, you got to wonder about being in the head of Felipe Pena. Is he really calling for, you know, a greasing accusation, or is he trying to get in the head? A little gamesmanship. It could be. Uh -huh. You know. Which we see work a lot of the time. It's not, to, it's like, you can think what you want about it, but it can be effective depending on your opponent, so. Nicky Rod looks seemingly unfazed by the happening that just happened. The happening. See this insistence on controlling the far side leg. Oh, he's on the leg. Pena. Under the leg is Felipe Pena, unable to. Now Nick did a great job of clearing his knee line very, very early on. There's a lot of gamesmanship going on with that. Felipe's chatting with Nicky Rod out there. Now, a lot of. Uh, we should have people fight mic'd up. Emotion. Think, yeah, a lot of emotion from <laughs> Felipe Pena right now, Kendall. You're right. I think we should mic up the competitors. <laughs> I would imagine the event being Stop. emotion. Now a, a, a referee is going to speak to uh, Felipe's corner here. We have Andre Galvan and Draculino. They are, per WNO rules, not allowed to speak to our, our judges or a referee. So that was probably a quick warning about that. That could result in a penalty for his athlete. Yeah, thanks for the clarification, Chase. I was really, you know, Gabriel Martins is a, an amazing referee. He's on the stage all the time because he follows the rules to T. He does an excellent job controlling. Oh, there goes a body lock. Sorry to jump in there. No, no, you're good. I like I like seeing this for sure. Good hand connection, like you were saying earlier, Jake, with someone who likes to body lock pass. You got to keep your knees uh, out of this butterfly wide open position that we see Felipe in now. And if Felipe needs to be very careful not to extend his legs too far, because that's usually when Nicky Rod will drop Flies his hips over, down and right. fly over. So we'll see if he's waiting for that. Here we see the Sentence, traditional yeah. butterfly. Yeah, he was able to enter his other leg, his left leg back inside, so now has two butterfly hooks. And this, we're seeing the moment of truth. Yeah, Nikki this Rod. is a better position for Nicky Rod. He's starting to close in on this heavy half guard, and if I had to bet, I would say we're gonna see Nicky slow down and be very, very patient in this position. Unless Felipe can create some space, which we're starting to see very strong cross faces, starting to relieve a little bit of the pressure off of his chest. But now Nicky bringing his right elbow inside. So this right elbow can really act as a wedge inside that leg to start to open up the pass instead of uh, Philippe being able to bring his left knee up. So his forearm and his elbow act as a very, very strong position there until he may be able to enter his right foot over the top and kind of be in that shin pinning position. We're going to hear from our judges in just a moment and see what they are favoring in this match in the first third of things. Felipe Pena getting a little, a little grinding of the face of Nick Rodriguez there. But Rodriguez doing the right thing. He needs to stay patient in this position. He needs to relish every good see spot. That foot. Judges favor blue. Yeah, not surprised at all here to see that, especially with this strong passing position. Now we saw for a moment Nick able to bring his right leg inside. And now his, it's, it's been popped back out, and I believe his right elbow was trying to keep the leg pinned down, but switches to a cross face now. Felipe Pena needs to not let that body lock happen again. He's doing a good job controlling the wrist, and he disengages. Stop! We're gonna reset to the center here. We see, uh, we hear Galvao in the corner of Pena talking about the body lock, probably looking at avoiding hey. that position overall since that was the nearest to scoring position we've seen so far in this first 10 minutes. And again, like we were talking about, Pena seeming very, very comfortable and confident laying all the way down, even without both of his legs in his own control, it doesn't seem bothered. But now another body lock connection here by Nick Rodriguez. More of a traditional butterfly guard out of Felipe Pena now. This As Nicky Rod passing to the side, forcing Felipe to turtle. My goodness. Huge near pass there from Nick. That was a great look at a pass. But Pena's amazing agility and defense able to recover 
to a complete recovery, right? Not going back into the half guard, not be grinding and turtling and getting smashed. I mean, that says so much about not only his athleticism and his agility and his shape and his physicality, but really his experience, right? He knows how to, once he creates a little bit of space, even the, the scoreboard once again, and not have to be in those grimy positions for too long. Man, it's, it's just so lightning quick. The Nick Rod's ability to mix up the pressure with the speed. It's, it's really something to behold. Yeah, I see Nicky was trying to keep his elbows inside for a moment to avoid the collar tie of Pena. But then as that hand fight ensued, he was able to get back to a body lock once again. But opening up an Uma Plata potentially here with Felipe bringing his left leg over. Oh, here that's we go. Great attempt here from Felipe. Great counter as he oh, comes to top. Oh, here we go. Felipe Pena with the first big attempt of the day. And wow. Nick Rod responds. Wow, Nick did a beautiful job rolling through there just to keep his arm safe and up. And usually that position ends up in a very strong sweep. But the... Uh, attention to detail there from Nikki, able to come up and redouble leg and end up back in the same top position. Amazing. You saw Pena motioning a little bit again, I think, on the greasing call. They're just getting sweaty at this point. Yeah, 13 I think it's minutes into this match. It's hard to imagine with 13 minutes with these guys. Nikki Rod. That it wouldn't be slippery. <laughs> in on another look at a body lock here. Doesn't seem like his hands are connected, but you can tell what the intent might be. But that half guard, though, is is uh, pretty nice. But Fleep doing a good job using his left hand to kind of dig an underhook back here so that if Nick does rush too quickly to that chest-to-chest -to -chest connection, he'll be able to get some elevation. And instead, Nick backs out. And, you know, it's worth mentioning that uh, Nikki Rod has stayed incredibly consistent. The game plan is evident. He wants the body lock. But Felipe Pena needs to make this mid-match adjustment. He has to nip that in the bud. He can't keep letting that happen because this sideways guard with the knee shield low is, it's inviting Nicky Rod. Oh, here comes an oh, inversion. Oh, here we go. Oh, Nicky Rod in. Sits oh, back oh my goodness. He's on a heel. Felipe Nicky Rod in is on in on a heel. There's not a lot of hip control yet from Nicky Rod, but this is not a place you want to hang out if you're Felipe Pena. Could this be it? Oh, Felipe Pena, though, hitting the reversal. Might peek, out, bit, might peek out to the back. Oh, here we go! And the takedown defense of Nick Rodriguez. Wow. This is our main event, ladies and gentlemen. Incredible defense there from Nick because that would have really changed the tides on things had Pena been able to come up in that. I don't know many people that could have avoided the takedown or the back attack from that position with someone like Philippe Pena. That was incredible. We're seeing Nicky Rod evolve. That's what we're seeing. We're getting to see this. I believe he's still a purple ball, right? We're seeing him improve. <laughs> it doesn't even matter anymore. It, it doesn't I don't know matter, but color. still. <laughs> yeah. Nicky Rod, a little bit of frustration creeping across his face at this point. He had a few good looks early. Now Felipe Pena is finding some openings. We may see another inversion here from the Gracie Baja competitor. What's interesting there is Nick was the one who initiated, well, I would say Felipe uh, uh, initiated the movement, and then Nick willingly sat back and attacked his own leg. And we may see something similar here. Look at that really great control from Pena. He's got a little hook around the arm. Oh, but that potentially invites the body lock once again. Every time Nick Rodriguez initiates a body lock, we have to keep in mind that it does take time for Felipe Pena to stop it. Right. This is at least 45 seconds off the match. Every time that Nicky Rod, at minus just now, <laughs> initiates his hands, they hurt locking you. underneath the, the lower back of Felipe Pena. I do find it promising, though, for the remaining 14 and 15, 14 minutes and 15 seconds that we saw Philippe have a great opening. He started to shift the tide of the match, but Nick was also Stop. really willing to engage in the legs and kind of go back and change the game plan himself, which opened up more attacks for Pena. Referee Gabra Martins. Going to have another little dry off session, it looks like. Yeah, sparking the. 
Interesting, Nick had a drink of water and it looked like Penna's corner was like, well, if he gets one, you got one too, come all right, here. All right, all right, fair enough. You know? Very, yeah, right, right. <laughs> some interesting audibles being thrown <laughs> here at who's number one in the main event. Thank thankfully it all worked out there. They all sort of got what they needed out of that. <laughs> I mean, Nikki Rod did say, I'm, I'm gonna train on Saturday night anyway. So maybe, hey, just go get a bit of water in between the round. I should have actually asked Nicky Rod before this, and I forgot to. I didn't notice either if he shaves his arms and legs. Because I don't know if you guys, I'm sure you have trained with somebody who does that. It feels completely different. It's Here. very, feels, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Here was a, a uh, for the replay, a big close-up on the arm of Nick Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's relevant. I have training partners who, like, if I have, wear shorts, they're like, I don't want to train with you because girls shave their legs. It's a real thing. But I don't know of many guy competitors who do. I don't know. Good question. There's nothing inherently in I the mean, rules it's not against shaving your legs. I mean, if I were a dude, I might do it. I don't know. You're more aerodynamic that way. <laughs> we're not swimming, but we're kind of, I mean, we're sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, swimmers do it. <laughs> might a, as well be a swimming. Quote for the mantelpiece. With the amount of sweat that's going on here. Basically swimming. All right, back to the action. <laughs> Again, we've seen this over and over tonight. Control of that far arm. Philippe Pena doing a great job kind of keeping. Oh, so oh, guillotine! Made. Wow! Guillotine attempt! That Nicky Rod does not like that! That was Ooh. absolutely threatening for Nick to back out of a body lock like that. Stand straight up. He was going to deadlift Pena off the floor <laughs> if he had to, to get his head free. And true to his word, Pena has used the length of this match to his advantage. Stop! Yeah, the crowd does not like uh, the fact that Felipe Pena got poked in the eye. I think it's a. I think something got in his eye. Oh something. yeah. A little contact being handed over to Andre Galvao. Save that for later, I guess. Maybe not. A little bit of a different approach out of both competitors. Felipe Pena now opting to sit up a little more. Yeah, he found that guillotine quickly after sitting up. Maybe lulling Nicky Rod into a false sense of security, burying his head in there. Felipe now looking again to perhaps invert and roll through, chase the legs. Now I'm not sure when we get our next uh, judge's opinion. I want to say, is it at 10 minutes, Chase? Yes. It will be at 10 minutes. So I'm very, very interested to see who our judges are favoring at that time. There he goes. Here we go! Wow. Here we go! Huge sweep there from now, Pena. Now can Felipe stay on top? But now Nick on his own attack. Oh, Nick going for a footlock. Felipe Pena shaking his head, but Nick Rodriguez is really biting and on And this is what Felipe Pena has done to so many before. Nicky Rod is hit the back off of these kind of exchanges. Can he secure the position? I think Nick needs to keep moving. Wow. Will he end up on top? top? Oh, what an exchange. Nick oh. Rodriguez oh, oh my God. on three days notice is giving Felipe Pena all he can handle. That is vintage Felipe Pena. Heat sinking missile for the wow. back. Baiting the footlock to chase yep. it. I mean, what an amazing sweep. Oof. I mean, first of all, the, the, <laughs> the sweep in itself. And then he had a very, very strong look at the back. Chased after multiple defense rounds by, uh, by Nick. Just incredible. And now back to the same open guard that we've been seeing all night. Now, what a match. This has been incredible so far. Arm drag attempt here from Felipe Pena. Yeah, Felipe Felipe's getting more, he's getting more active, open, Pendle. Yeah, he's opening up a little bit. Not even just, I think he's really been going for it a lot during this match, but it seems to be opening up into different chains of attacks rather than just sticking with one. Yeah, great point. We've seen a, a lot of variety from Felipe in the last five minutes here. Yes. And I think that that's his best bet. I mean, look, he's had Nick in a couple bad positions back to back now. Almost came up on a takedown or maybe look at a back clinch. Now he really had a good look at the back and he's taunting Nick to come into the guard once again. So I think we're gonna keep seeing some of that variety. Because the thing with Nick Rodriguez is it seems he gets, as patterns repeat themselves, he's getting a better edge. So they go into the same kind of pattern. He gets closer to a pass or he gets, you know, he's able to defend Felipe's attacks early on. But as the variety begins, then he's really having to get creative. Nick will have to get creative. And I think that that's Pena's path to victory. Maybe you're looking to shoot a triangle or something cheeky here, Felipe Pena. Looks like we're about 20 seconds away from the judges' favor, too. We'll see if it switches, because earlier on, Nick Rodriguez definitely had the judges' favor, but since then, Felipe Pena has definitely amounted 
a sizable offense to potentially swing in, but I'm really interested to see. And Nicky Rod's definitely killing some time here. The one thing that's been clear about his strategy, he's very offensive in the body lock position, but when he's on his feet, he's sort of maintaining a perimeter distance, maybe getting some air. Right now, you see him not really driving forward with the same intensity, which is to be expected. Late last minute match at 30 minutes. Wow, oh, look big at this. inversion here. Oh my goodness, interesting attack by Felipe Pena. That could be a dangerous spot. Yeah, he rolled over onto the far arm, but now Nick able to stay out of danger. Judges favor red. Wow, the tides have turned here for Pena. It looks like Nick Rodriguez was trying to taunt Pena a little bit by mirroring Laying the same down, stance yeah. he was doing. Sort of a Nick Diaz, Anderson Silva situation. You're hearing the entire crowd start to close. Yeah, this, to start to this coach place is fired up. Let me tell you here. Oh, wow. diving in is Nicky Rod. Met with a strong frame from Felipe Pena. Oh, hand all the way into the front of the face from Pena. Looks to me like Nicky Rod is definitely having his mentality tested by Pena, but he's staying true to this game plan, this body lock game plan has been something he's initiated all night. Early on, he initiated it to success. But I think so far, it looks like Felipe Pena finally has the, the comfortable answer to it, remaining patient. So interesting exchange there. Pena looked at the referee. He was saying that he wanted Nick to come into the guard. And our referee told Pena that he had to also go towards Nick, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a good to see this kind of neutrality from a referee where he's like, man, you both got to keep moving forward. And there's not one aggressor that's stronger than the other. They're very evenly matched, I believe, in these offensive attacks now. Yeah, our referee, Gabor Martins, not easily swayed by a complaining competitor. Once again, look like Felipe was potentially looking for an opportunity to shove that head down, go for a guillotine, but... Now back in the half guard. Early on, we saw that this was a, a, a successful position for Nicky Rod. So with seven minutes, 45 seconds left in this match, Felipe Pena needs to respect this position. Yeah, again, I think Pena's pack, path to victory is going to be continuing to move towards that variety to open up a little bit more. Settling in to this smashing half guard is a difficult position because like you mentioned earlier, Jake, it really eats up the clock too. Even though Nikki hasn't been able to get a solid pass attempt, it wears you down, it eats the clock, and now we Oh see my goodness. That was very smart from Nikki Rodriguez. Opened up the back a little bit here as well and still on the attack. Good adjustment from Felipe. Yeah, for a moment, Nick was able to bring his right foot inside and get to a double inside butterfly position. Almost flew into the mount, but again, the experience, the ability of Pena to recover back to a neutral position here is incredible. Oh, nice inversion from Felipe. Chases a leg now. Leg. Here we go. Nick trying to kick out here. Just a grip over the heel by Felipe Pena, possibly getting up. Wow. And once again, Rodriguez drops his hips down. Great adjustment from Rodriguez there to avoid any further danger, but Felipe keeping a solid attacking pace here. Yeah, I think that was a very smart move from Pena to look to the back, and clearly we saw a near back take earlier on the other side of the mat, so I think that's a great option for Felipe to keep looking hey. towards. You can hear some urgent fans of Felipe Pena, possibly friends yelling, no body lock. Stay away from the body lock. <laughs> yeah, I imagine we're all on the same page. See a little cartwheel action there from Nick, which opens up his leg just for a moment. Oh, oh. guillotine again. But it slips off. Nick's timing coming back into his double legs for a main top position. good position here. Wow. Felipe Pena is going to have to do something uh, pretty aggressive to this regain is, a better guard. This, this is a is big passing position here from, from Nick, but again, one more time at recovery from Pena. I thought that was going to be a, a harder battle. Nicky Rogan, a little bit winded out here. You got to give him so much credit for coming in on 48 hours notice, putting on this kind of kind of match. Incredible performance from both athletes out there. I mean, we are nearing the five minute mark, and these guys have been nonstop for. Oh, there's a minutes. body lock. I think Nicky Rod earlier, Chase was actually trying to taunt Pena by initiating the same sort of position that Pena was. Pena utilizing that arm saddle, that, that shallow underhook to break apart that body lock. 
And only a little over five minutes left in this, our main event of the evening. And man, you would not think that Nicky Rod even took this fight on three days notice no. with, with how well he's kept up with Felipe Pena. And mind you, Felipe Pena right now, I believe he's still in the lead. But Nick Rodriguez is doing a great job for himself, staying with the passes. I mean, look how aggressive he's being. He's waiting forward, really trying to win this match. I and what a story that would be. It's extremely close, and Nicky Rod again pressuring forward. If he, if he solidifies a pass, that may be enough. I don't want to call it. I'm glad I'm not a judge. But the margins are thin. They are razor thin. Look at that control on the farm from Pena. He knows that if that right arm starts to climb up, he's going to be in big trouble. But again, back to what we were talking about earlier, Nick can also use that right arm to open up the, uh, the butterfly hook of his right foot to come over the top of the thigh. So either way, he has some options here, which is why I think he's so successful in this position. So Pena keeping a good, strong control of that hand in general. We still have plenty of time to work. You're seeing Felipe Pena create some space. Four minutes left. You've seen what Felipe can do with just 30 seconds of a great control. He can open up a look on the back, open up a sweep. I mean, at this point in a match, with a close match like this, it is very difficult as the competitor to know exactly when to press on the gas. And as I say that, big press on the gas from Nick. Oh my God, look how slippery they both are as well. You saw, look, just, Ooh. Unable to even rummage on the face. Some strong frames on the face, but Nicky Rod unfazed. But very hard to know when to be, get those big explosions going because one wrong move and a big explosion like that, and your partner is going to advance. They're going to take that opportunity. But if you wait too long, then you don't have that time to create an opportunity you might need to get a last minute score or last minute submission attempt. You were definitely seeing some real frustration out of Felipe Pena here. Nick, Nicky Rod has stayed consistent with this game plan, and it's just very difficult for Felipe to generate any of his openings. But look at Nicky Rod faking like he's going to drop back on a, on a footlock. Big collar tie there from Nick Rodriguez. Now, this is, for a second, it was looking a little different from Pena. He was staying in more of a seated guard. This is a good body lock here from Rodriguez, but a big elevation from Pena will say otherwise. Here we go, possible look. What a classic match. This has been incredible. Wow. Oh, here Nicky we go. Oh, here we go. From Nick. Let's see if Felipe can reverse his position one more time, maybe chase the back. And this is where Pena needs to be. This he needs to be trying to pass the guard of Nicky Rodriguez, but Looking this could be a dangerous spot. Nick Rodriguez looking at a heel hook. Nick knows he needs a submission oh, to change a... to change it, to get a strong attempt, to change the judge's favor, even if he doesn't get the finish. This is a huge Oh my goodness! Heel. This looks tight! Will Nick Rodriguez get the tap? This could be enough. Even if he doesn't get the tap, this could be enough to change the judge's minds. Felipe Pena oh really my doesn't God. like it. Look at the torque on that foot. Felipe Pena really doesn't like the torque on it. What an attempt from Nick Rodriguez, and he ends up on top. But now he needs to be very careful in this position because Felipe can turn it into an attack of his own. Oh my goodness, one minute, 45 seconds left, and Nick Rodriguez may have just very well earned the judge's favor. Oh my God, that, that makes it so close. But you have to imagine how much gas did they have to spend on that last 30 second exchange. 140 left. I really think this is one of those classic scenarios where it's like, who wants it more? Who's gonna be willing to empty it as m more than the other person and who's gonna make it happen? And what did that do to Felipe Pena's knee? We don't know how his <laughs> knee's feeling. He might have just not wanted to tap. I'm gonna be honest, I think with adrenaline, he probably doesn't feel that much at all right now. <laughs> this is gonna be... Not no one, no one's going to be happy with the decision in this match should it go with it. This will not be a quiet venue. Let's put it like that. Felipe Pena looking for a shoulder crunch. They have to be very careful here as well to not look like they are stalling or they're not moving for action. Late in the match like that, that can make a huge difference in the refs and in the, in the judges' opinion. As, we, as time expires, if one person is really on the gas and one's backing out, that can really, really change their minds. Felipe Pena putting his fingers all up in the face of Nick Rodriguez. 40 seconds left. It will be Felipe Pena or it will be Nicky Rodriguez. Will we see one last 
exchange here with 30 seconds on the clock. I think we're going to have to because I think both people know that they need it. Into another strong body lock is Nick and 20 seconds. Trying to get that torque on the shoulder there from Penna. That could turn into an attack like the Omoplata we saw earlier. Nearly 10 seconds in our main event. Felipe Penna goes one more look at this Omoplata, but that is going to be it. What a match here tonight to conclude things at who's number one. We'll be back in a minute with our winner. Stay tuned. What an impressive showing from Nick Rodriguez. I mean, all things considered. Felipe Pena came in long camp at Autos Jiu Jitsu. And Nick Rodriguez on three days notice. Was able to make it happen. And let's take a look at some of the big moments, Chase. Right here, you see Nick Rodriguez dropping back on a heel. He did this a couple times in the match. And here we see it once again, different angle. And Felipe Pena, you can see he really was worried about it. And man, just what an incredible, I don't have words, Chase. I'm, I'm just uh, thrilled to be here, Jake, man. It's been a momentous night. Both men showed up, put on a performance of a lifetime. Nicky Rod, two days notice. What a hero coming out here looking like that. Felipe Pena making good on that camp, showing off the durability, the skills, the heart, the tenacity. You can see it all here in these clips. We saw a bit of everything. And like you said, Chase, heat-seeking missile is a great way to talk about Felipe Pena. He is laser accurate, and it was everything Nick Rodriguez can do to avoid them and also maintain it, uh, some aggression of his own. Your winner by decision. What a contest between these two titans. We're gonna take it over to Kendall Rusing for what I imagine will be a colorful post-fight interview. All right, after an incredible 30 minutes, we have our winner here, Philippe Pena. Now, Philippe, talk a little bit about how you thought this match was gonna go. All right, guys, thank you, thank you. We wanna hear from him, though. We wanna hear from the champ. Tell us, tell us how you thought the match was gonna go. Let's hear it. I just made the crowd. <laughs> Guys, uh, just would like to thanks Nick Rod to take them at come if to take them at uh, in such a short, short time. You know, uh, he's a true warrior. Is the he just did that against Gordon, and uh, when he he tapped Gordon, but he lost. So, I really appreciate uh, Nick to step on really tough match. Uh, was way tougher than I expect. Uh, I think the match could go to either one. Sorry if uh, not everyone liked the match, but I did my best. Nick did the best, and uh, we we're here to give a show for you all, help Jiu Jitsu grow, you know, uh, and I feel blessed anyway. If, even if I lose, uh, I'm really happy to be here. I had an amazing camp 
with uh, Andre, you know, from a different team. You know, I think uh, you should be really rivals. And we train together. Uh, he trained me, and uh, he become like a brother to me. Uh, he treat me like a student, even if, if I represent another team. So I really would like to thank Andre, thank Joaquino, thank Sominho. Uh, thanks all my teachers during my career. Was uh, such a really a blessed camp, like I said. Uh, I feel really happy to be here, you know, and uh, to see Jiu Jitsu growing and be part of it. And um, about, uh, I would like to say one thing that uh, Gordon had a stomach problem. Uh, he said he had a virus or anything like that. Uh, so I would like to challenge Gordon. I can stay here one week more, and we fight uh, next Saturday. So I think uh, it's more than enough uh, time to recover and everything. And he was already feeling better because he was in a restaurant with it Mo and all his friends. So one week, I think, is more than enough to feel safe and. I'll be really happy to take this camp and fight Gordon because it's for who I train. I study the game and get prepared for that for no time limit for his game. So I wait his answer. It will be a pleasure to stay here one more week and fight him. Thanks, my brother. Thanks, my, my, my family, all my friends, and all you guys for the support. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for all grab as well to make this fight happen and do this amazing event. Awesome. Congratulations, Sweep. Thank you. All right. Well, before we tee off uh, submission of the night, we want to say thank you once again, because this Tezos Who's Number One is brought to you by Tezos, the energy efficient blockchain and official partner of Flow Sports. Tezos is designed to evolve, built to empower. Visit Tezos.com to learn more. Chase, we are wrapping up. What a night, Jake. It's been a pleasure to call the matches with you and Kendall here. We'll be right back with the submission tonight. And don't go anywhere. We'll have our post-show analysis following that. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Man, I'm in awe. That was fun. Yeah, I, first time in Who's Number One, and I absolutely love it.